Turbos versus blowers. Who wins? Let's find out. Hey guys, I'm Richard Older. Welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at that age-old power struggle. You know, the blower versus the turbo. We've got two combinations. We've got a supercharger versus a turbo on a 5.3 liter L33, both equipped with the same camshaft. But is it the wrong cam? We also have blower versus turbo on a larger 6.2 liter LS3. And guess what? They have different cams. Are those the wrong cam? Who knows? Let's take a look. Okay guys, we're gonna jump right in in our comparison between superchargers and turbochargers, and we're gonna demonstrate why the turbo usually makes more power per pound of boost compared to the supercharger, primarily because it doesn't have the parasitic loss associated with driving the supercharger. So that's power that's basically not shown on the dyno, it's just absorbed by the motor. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is our 5.3 liter L33, the aluminum motor that I was lucky enough to score from the wrecking yard. It was equipped with a Brian Tooley Racing uh, Truck Norris cam, and then also with a valve spring upgrade. We ran this thing with the Holly HP management system. We had 80 pound ejectors on it we ran it with a single turbo using the stock exhaust manifolds into a y pipe it was a t6 s475 from the guys at summit racing it also had an air to water intercooler we ran it on e85 you know it was a good combination so equipped with the truck norris cam and the single turbo this was pumping out 7.3 7.4 pounds of boost our turbo combination produced 633 horsepower so now let's compare that directly to running the same motor same camshaft all of that is the same but we ran it with our adapted ford racing 2.3 liter supercharger using the demuse engineering kit and we're going to go ahead and show you what happened when we ran that so here is the supercharger, and right off the bat, I know what you're thinking, Richard, that supercharger made more power. It did. In fact, equipped with the supercharger, the same combination, produced 707 horsepower, 706 horsepower, and 690 foot-pounds of torque. But here's the thing to think about. <clears throat> the turbo combination was running 7.3 pounds. The supercharger combination, I didn't run these as a back-to-back. -back. These are just two tests run on the same motor on different days, in fact, wildly different days. But on the supercharger we were making 14.2 pounds. So basically double the boost, and we only made less than 100 more horsepower. So if we do the math and we compare how much power these things actually made per pound of boost, because we know what this motor made naturally aspirated, it made 425-ish horsepower, and then made 706 with the blower. If we do our subtraction, we see that this combination for every pound of boost, for every 14.2 pounds of boost, for each one of those, it made 19.64 horsepower per pound. By comparison, our turbo combination, running only 7.3 pounds, 7.4 pounds, made a whopping 27.84 horsepower per pound, which means if we were to raise this thing up another seven pounds or so to equal the combination produced by the supercharged motor, we would have dramatically more horsepower. It would go up 27.8 or 28 horsepower per pound of boost. So for seven more horsepower, we're looking at a dramatic increase. And this shows goes to show you, we made almost as much power at seven pounds as we did running 14 pounds on the supercharger. Not quite. It would get closer. What it, what it would take is three or four pounds basically would be the separation between these two. The turbo combination would make what the blower combination does, but at about three or four pounds less boost. And that amount basically is what it takes to actually drive that supercharger. Let's look at another comparison on a bigger LS3. 
Here's another example of a comparison between running a supercharger and a turbo on our LS3 combination this time. And you guys get to complain about these not being the same camshaft, but I want you to let me know in the comments, what do you think? How much of a difference do you think that this camshaft would make? And I'll go ahead and give you the specs on both of the camshafts. They were actually fairly similar. One of them was just a blower cam. So on this Kenny Bell, we ran a Kenny Bell 2.8 liter twin screw supercharger. This was an LS3 crate motor and it was equipped with a Brian Tui Racing Stage 3 positive displacement blower cam. And that cam spec out at a 617-595 lift split, a 231-248 degree duration split, and 120 degree lobe separation angle wide LSA for these uh, older kind of positive displacement Wah. blower cams. And our combination produced 775 horsepower and 643 foot-pounds. And this is at just a little over 9 pounds, 9.2, 9.3 pounds. We're going to take a look at the boost curves here in just a second. Here's what happened when we ran this same LS3 motor, but with a turbo. Here's our turbo combination. You can see we made quite a bit more power. And our turbo combination, we ran the factory LS3 intake manifold with a 92 millimeter throttle body. We had a precision 7675 turbo. We had our Procharger air to water intercooler on it. We had turbo smart wastegates running about 20 to 21 degrees of timing. We ran a little bit more timing on the supercharged combination. But run in this manner, you can see that the turbo combination made quite a bit more power. Peak power on the turbo combination was up over 800 at 825. Peak torque was all the way up at 771 foot-pounds. So you can see that the turbo combination made more power than the blower combination, but the turbo combination was equipped with a slightly different camshaft. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. That camshaft was a Comp 469 camshaft, which was a 613-623 lift split, very similar lift numbers, 231-247 degree duration split, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. So what do you guys think? What do you think about the difference? Obviously, the tighter LSA is going to improve, I would think, improve low speed power. Let me know what you guys think of the combination. Let, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> the reality is that it's not the camshaft that would make a difference between these two. It's the difference between one of them being supercharged and one of them being turbocharged and not having the parasitic loss. Even the efficient 2.8 liter Kenny Bell twin screw blower, still you still have to drive that blower. And with a turbo, you don't have those same kind of losses. That's why we're seeing such a big change. Let's go ahead and take a look at the boost curves. And when you see that, you'll go, oh yeah, that's right. There's even more of a difference than I thought. Back on the 5.3 liter example, we showed you the difference between the amount of horsepower that they made per pound of boost because we ran them at different boost levels. You could see that the turbo was making a lot more for every pound of boost. And a similar thing is happening here. I'm going to show you the boost curves on the Kenny Bell equipped LS3 and then also the turbo equipped LS3. And you guys can kind of decide for yourself and see what's going on here. So this is the boost curve with the Kenny Bell on the cammed LS3. Started out at about eight pounds, actually dipped slightly probably near the torque peak, I'm guessing maybe. Uh, down below seven and a half pounds. So that's a seven and a half or a half pound drop down to seven or seven and a half pounds. Not a huge drop, but then started rising um, fairly steadily out past 6,500 RPM where it had a peak of nine and a half pounds, 9.5 pounds. This was the boost curve offered by the single turbo on the LS3. And you could see it started out lower and ended quite a bit lower only because we did not have a boost controller on this combination. All we did was have a manual controller and the amount of boost applied is a function of the wastegate, which also is a function of back pressure applied to that wastegate as we go up in power, back pressure goes up, uh, even on our, on our precision turbo, which works fairly well. And we've made We've made 11 or 1200 horsepower with that turbo, so that we know it support a lot more than this. But this is the boost curve that was supplied. We're not seeing a dramatic change in boost here. In fact, we're going, I'll go ahead and, and uh, move me over here so we can kind of see a better shot of the curve. We started out a little over seven pounds. It rose up to 7.3 or four, and then ended up out at the top at 7,000 RPM dropping down to 6.4 pounds. So in a comparison at the horsepower peaks where the Kenny Bell combination was making nine and a half pounds, the turbo combination was only making six and a half pounds. So at three pounds less boost, 
the turbo combination was still making more power. Now here you guys can jump in and say, yeah, but all that's because of the camshaft. So let me know in the comments. It's not the camshaft. It's actually the difference between driving a supercharger and driving a turbo, which requires very little power compared to the blower. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do you think? Turbos rule, right? Well, kind of. In terms of power production, the turbos always do well. In fact, they're going to do better than the supercharger almost every time because they don't have the parasitic losses associated with driving the supercharger. I have a number of videos up on this channel that demonstrate exactly that. We've compared turbos to a centrifugal blower, a roots blower, and a twin screw blower. And in every instance, there's power loss associated with driving any of those style blowers. So the turbo often makes, usually always, <laughs> makes more horsepower per pound of boost than the supercharger stuff. But does that mean turbos are just going to wholly replace the supercharger? No. I mean, who among us hasn't seen Mad Max? We all want to engage that blower and do warp speed <laughs> out in the Australian Outback. But I digress. Blowers have their place, and they're going to be used over and over again. The guys from Eaton are doing very well providing superchargers for a lot of the OEM applications. Look at Top Fuel. Everybody brings that up. Superchargers work very well. They're easy to install. They provide immediate boost response. There's always going to be a place for them, and that's just nothing but a good thing. Some of us want turbos. Some of us want blowers. Some of us want the different kinds of blowers, and that's always good because choice is good. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.